All right, so I have been reading all of your guys' comments on my latest video, specifically the Rainbow Six Siege sponsored content that I've been doing in regards to, again, Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy, as well as your guys' thoughts on the tactical shooter genre as a whole. And because those comments were on a video, you know, that was sponsored by Rainbow Six, that had to be the focus of the video. I don't really think I was able to give you guys a detailed opinion of my thoughts on the current state of where we're at in the tactical shooter genre, as well as the state of like AAA studios just straight up ignoring the tactical side of FPS and why I think that is. So I wanted to make this video as a follow up to my Rainbow Six content, no sponsor, no need to keep the sole focus on Rainbow Six because I think this topic stems from that, but I need to bring in more examples from other sides of the FPS space. So if you guys end up liking the video, leave a like down below, jump into the conversation. You guys wanted a real talk with no sponsors, you got it. You guys know that I love games like Ghost Recon, Zero Hour, Six Days of Volusia. I, I started this channel playing Arma back in the day. I grew up playing tactical shooters like SOCOM and all the way up to like more recently covering the test for Grey Zone Warfare. In between that coverage, I always dabble in other FPS games. You guys know this. I've covered pretty much every single Call of Duty that has ever released, Battlefield, every game that has come out in the last 10 years, games like Splitgate, Shatterline. I'm all around in the FPS genre. But one thing I've noticed and have had kind of a bit of a disconnect in the tactical side of this is all of the videos that I cover where there's a new update for a tactical shooter indie team that just came out. Everyone is always excited. Those videos always do insanely well. And then what I notice is the update comes out, the player base will spike for a day and then drop right back down. And that's not to say that these games aren't great either. I would say about 95% of the games that I cover on this channel are struggling to maintain a player base, as well as bringing in new players into the fold, because as we all know, I mean, I, I remember covering World War III back in the day, when World War III first released into early access, it was like $36. They priced themselves out of the market, but I thought the game was really, really good for what it was at the time of early access. But because the game was struggling to bring in players, new players didn't want to jump in because there's nobody to play with. The player base was always struggling and I find that that's the case in a lot of the games that I cover. I mean, fuck me, it's become a meme on this channel for years now that if there is something that's exciting in the tactical space, chances are that game is dead. The largely successful ones are definitely few and far between. You have your squads, you have your hell let loose, and in my opinion, the largest tactical shooter, which is Tarkov, we don't really know their player numbers, but based on how many cheaters we see being banned on a monthly basis, you can assume it's a pretty healthy pool, most likely in a state of its own, even comparative to the most popular Steam-based tactical shooters. Realistically, I would say that less than 5% of true tactical shooters have been a rousing success for the development team and have been able to find long-term viability. And I would say even less than 5% could do so without selling microtransactions, battle passes, cosmetic skins and bundles and the like. I mean, fuck me, one of the most successful tactical shooters, at least in the PVP space that I've seen, would have been Insurgency Sandstorm, and even they succumbed to the microtransactions, the cosmetics, the bundles, the weapon skins, all of that shit. I say all of this because it's become clear to me over the last few years that the idea of getting a AAA studio to invest their time, resources, and budgets into a realistic, hardcore, grounded, in reality, tactical shooter at the level that we all want them to, to get to that quality level, while on top of that, maintaining post-launch support without going the scummy live service route, giving us new content, and keeping the game alive year in and year out. I think that dream is essentially dead. I look around at the games that I've been covering for years now, games that I fucking love, and games that I myself have championed because I believe they deserve bigger player bases, those ground branches, those zero hours, the six days, they're all fantastic examples of great games for the price that they're selling at, at least in my opinion. Ask some folk in my comment section, they'd probably hate the games if they were free regardless. But what I find is I cover their updates, people are excited in the comment section, but it never Never moves the needle in terms of the player bases. Now, granted, I'm sure these games are still selling copies. I'm sure they're still doing okay, but general perception is 
a lot of these games are dead. Now, in my last Rainbow Six video, I focused on the fact that Rainbow Six, all intents and purposes, has managed to maintain themselves over the past nine years, and I gave them a lot of kudos because a, they've been able to do just that, but they've also been able to grow that player base year over year over year. And I, I took a lot of heat for that because A, I mean, it was a sponsored video, so of course I'm going to, but B, everyone says that they're not, they don't give a shit about the player base. They don't care about the player numbers. They care about the idea that it is no longer a the Rainbow Six that they grew up playing. And if you have watched my previous coverage of Ubisoft, Tom Clancy, and what they have managed to do to a lot of these IPs that I grew up playing, I was on that same wavelength with you guys for years. I fully believed back in 2017 and 2018 that we still had a shot at a studio coming in from the AAA space, if it was Ubisoft or somebody else that could give us that gritty, grounded experience. I was excited when games like Call of Duty came out in 2019 with the clean house mission, and I saw the 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 potential of getting back to the glory days of adult storytelling and gritty and dark narratives. And what I realized over the past, I would say four years now, is that that dream is essentially dead. And the reason I think that is because the AAA space is so bloated. It is so large. And a lot of their focus is always on the return, the shareholder investments, right? You have to continually grow year over year. And when I look at Ubisoft, let's just take them for example. They've done a lot of things that we have completely roasted them for, right? The skull and bones, this ex-defiant blunder that continually goes on. They have made a lot of mistakes. But when it comes to that return on investment for, for shareholders, I think Rainbow Six has done a good enough job. I also understand if you aren't a fan of the way that, you know, the game has gone with so many different operators and the gadgets and the sci-fi and all... But my question to you would then be, how do they, as a AAA company, keep the game grounded, keep the game realistic, lower the amount of operators, which in my opinion, that just turns to lowering the amount of content, doing all of that to serve the tactical side of us, the ones that would be there day one to play a real Rainbow Six title. How do they do that while also having to you know, answer to their shareholders, grow that game year over year while still having to keep it realistic. The answer is a lot harder than you would think. And that was kind of the whole point of the conversation is like, there might be ways to do it, but as a company, you have to do what is best for your bottom line. And a lot of you were saying like you fell out of Rainbow Six when they started to do all of these things and, and go in that sci-fi unrealistic route and you loved it more at launch. You want the original operators back. But then when you look at the numbers from back at launch and the subsequent like six to seven months afterwards, the game kind of launched to middling player numbers. Like there were indie games at the time that were doing better numbers, which tells me that the AAA space is essentially like it's too big to be able to invest in a niche genre like the tactical FPS space and still keep it as realistic and hardcore and milsim and, and all of those things that we want while still being able to turn a huge profit. There has really only been a couple of games that have been able to do that and their gameplay loops don't even resemble Rainbow Six of old or Rainbow Six of new. I'm talking Squad, Tarkov, and Hell Let Loose. Some of these other indie games have obviously made money, but their budgets are like a quarter of what Ubisoft would have even put into a title like this. So it's not this, we're not even playing in the same ballpark. So for me, a few years ago when I realized, holy fuck, like we're never getting, we're never going back. Like it, that, it's dead. We are never going back. So where do you turn for your tactical fix? Well, you got to turn to the indie space. And then that's when I started looking around and I realized, holy shit, there is piles of bodies of, of dead games looking around the space. It ain't really a healthy one outside of, again, those little outliers that like, yeah, Squad was successful. Hell at Loose was successful. Tarkov is successful. How many games on my channel have I covered that looked great coming up to their launch and then struggled to find a player base? And I'm not, and again, I'm not talking about the quality level, but we, we kind of have to start talking about the quality level because why aren't people playing these games? 
right? There's obviously problems, whether it's the quality level itself, whether it's the amount of content, whether it's the progression, and it's just not keeping people's attention long enough. People have to wait, you know, six, eight, nine months between updates. They come back for the update, they play it, they consume it all, and then they're back to their, their usual suspects, whatever that game is for them. The indie side of the tactical shooter space hasn't really been feeding us unless you're somebody who plays like an hour or two a week and you're not just chewing through everything that comes your way. If you're a casual player of tactical games, I'm sure you're eating pretty good. If you're somebody like me who like, I want to play everything that comes out, it kind of just feels like it's it's like, okay, it's rinse and repeat. Some games that I thought had chances to recover themselves, but are literally sitting at zero players, games like Due Process, which I know, dude, the hype for Due Process coming out, the, the alphas that they did when the game was in like such an early state, everybody was so on board for it. And then it came out. Zero Hour was $7 when it launched. And I saw so many people shit on it. $7. And that's the thing. I can point to every single tactical shooter that, in my opinion, was a good game. And you look down in the comments and you get a lot of people that are excited. But you also get people that just point out issues. This game doesn't have great progression. This game doesn't have enough content. Yeah, this game is kind of janky. It needs more time in the oven. That is the indie space right now. So the AAA side isn't going to invest a shit ton of resources into making a game that might not return their investment. I remember when Ubisoft first announced Ghost Recon Wildlands and I saw the shift happen then. And back then, I was so fucking pissed. It's probably a reason why a lot of you guys are here. That was my first viral video. I made videos, I followed through, and I wasn't a fan of what Wildlands was because I got a taste of what Ghost Recon was when I was growing up, and in my opinion, those games were just better. But guess what? Wildlands sold, what, 10 million copies? and was a rousing success for Ubisoft. So who am I to say that they fucked up? And, and realistically, when they're decision-making, do they give a shit? about somebody sitting in a basement bitching online about the the direction of the Tom Clancy franchise when their main point is hey we have to make a game that delivers that sells so that we can continually grow our company the AAA space does nothing but care about their bottom line so that their shareholders are happy. The truth, I mean, we all know it, right? They don't really genuinely give a shit about our opinion until it affects that bottom line, which is the reason why X Defiant dropped the Tom Clancy branding because the reception to that announcement was so bad that they, they had to do something. It's a reason why Ghost Recon Frontlines was canceled altogether because the reception was so bad that they had to make a call. And at that time, when they saw the reception, they probably did a cost analysis to see whether it was worth going through with the, the further development of that title. They clearly think that X Defiant can take a market share from Call of Duty, and they think they're going to get their return, which is why that game is uh, apparently still being developed or, or coming out soon. I don't know what's going on there. But in 99% of cases, this is all about market reception and their internal cost analysis and their return on investment projections. And I think like the, the realistic nature of where we're at right now is I don't think the indie space is giving us games at the quality level that we want them at in 2024. And I don't think the AAA space is giving us games at all. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So with all of that said, and like, this is where I've been sitting for the last couple of years now. Well, where do you, where do you go? You know, one of the games that I loved playing at launch was Insurgency Sandstorm. They had their ranked mode in there. We were playing Firefight and it was awesome. And then the player base dropped off and then Firefight dropped off. And then they removed the rank mode. So that killed any incentive for me to play that game. I play Call of Duty for Call of Duty. I play Warzone Resurgence. And I love that, but that doesn't give me that tactical feel. I'm not going to sit here and cover incremental updates. We talked about that in the past. I got really tired of covering Ground Branch's latest update. Okay, they got a new map. Cool. We play the new map and then we're, we're and then what? You know, zero hour, same thing. Fucking six days in Fallujah, same thing. All these games, the same thing. Like, it is the same thing. 
over and over and over. We cover incremental updates that you'll only end up playing for a few days or a few hours, and then that's it. And then you go back. Ready or Not's player numbers right now, even though Ready or Not is is a it's a PVE co-op game, so their player numbers don't really set the stage for like you know it, it's not it doesn't need to be a bustling player base, but the numbers do show you that people chew through that content and then they drop it again because there's not enough to keep you in that ecosystem. It's just the truth. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but when you consistently cover games that do the same things, it's kind of like, okay, cool. Where do you go? Rainbow Six, bustling player base. It gives me that tactical feel as close to it as possible. It, it's slow. You can play it fast. There are people that sprint through with blitzes and montanes and shit, but you can play it slow. So it, it does have kind of a variable speed and pacing to the game. There's things like leaning. It's a very quick time to kill. Breaching and destruction. Like, it is, as much as people might hate the skins and might hate all of that bullshit, it is still a tactical shooter. It might not be realistic, but it is still a tactical shooter. It has a rank mode, which is where I play. Like, that is why I play R6. Realistically, R6 is the best tactical shooter, at least in the PvP space. And, and that's my opinion right? You can sit there and you can say Insurgency Sandstorm is better. If Insurgency Sandstorm had a bustling ranked mode, I would most likely still be playing that. If Ready or Not had a PvP mode that actually like wasn't trash like the alpha and had like a competitive ranked mode in that, I most likely would be playing that if it was good. But realistically, man, in the tactical space, in terms of competitive PvP, I do think Rainbow Six is leagues ahead of everybody else. And if you're one of those people who don't want to play the game just based on principle and you're, you're holding out, like, hey, kudos to you. But that vitriol that I see for me enjoying the game, I mean, fuck me, I've been playing it on stream for over a year. Every time I streamed it on YouTube, I had people coming in just fucking talking. It's insane. The, the vast amount of hatred that I see for me playing that title, that's nuts to me. It's, it's, it's like you guys feel like I abandoned you you know, like, oh, you, you turned your back. Like, that's what it feels like. When realistically, I'm just trying to find something that is worth my time to invest in. And I look over the fence at Rainbow Six and I see they're doing majors and invitationals and there's there's million dollar tournaments on the line and people are excited, new ops, new content. The game's been running and people, like, how, how do you look at that and say that they shouldn't have done that when the launch numbers showed them that for the first year, people weren't really playing the game that much. In my opinion, there is a way to do tactical shooters proper. But in order to do that, you need to be able to sustain it with post-launch content. And I know a lot of tactical shooter fans hate microtransactions. You guys hate battle passes. You guys hate cosmetic bundles. So the microtransactions have to be tasteful enough so that you would actually support the title long term. Things like map packs don't exist anymore because it splits the player base. So you need to be able to sustain yourself long term. How do you do that? Do you keep the cosmetics all grounded and realistic so you don't have pink bunny skins running around? I do think there is a path towards that. Absolutely. I think if a game, I mean, fuck me, World War Three was starting to do it, right? They're, all of their cosmetics and their unlocks were all grounded and realistic. They were using scans of like real world gear. And I thought that was awesome, but they didn't get, they didn't get off the ground enough to get into those, those really deep microtransactions. I do think that there is an alternate universe where Rainbow Six is still successful by keeping the skins tasteful and, you know, within the world and, and immersive enough to hold on to that old player base. But I feel like, let's say they did do that 100%. I still feel like a lot of you guys who are like Rainbow Six purists would have a problem with how many operators there are. Oh, they should have had the... I, I feel like the goalposts would always move to try to get it back to grounded, realistic, not a lot of operators, and the pure raw gunplay. And I think going that route, this game doesn't survive because we've seen so many other titles not survive. And so if you're Ubisoft, are you going to go that route when you have market research staring you right in the face that the games die as is, that player base isn't really prone to spending money on microtransactions. You have to make maps for free. There's a lot of there's a lot of variables that I think go into it that I think 
During the conversations we've had over the past couple of weeks with my Rainbow Six content, I feel like a lot of people have been ignoring that, and fair enough, you have your opinions. But as my viewers and my community challenge my opinions and, and try to make me think about it from their perspective, from the dev perspective, from all around, I want to throw it back on you and I want to challenge your thought process by thinking about what position Ubisoft is in and realizing that Ubisoft can't be the ones to deliver you the experience that you want because they're so big and they're so bloated and they're beholden to those shareholders. So then who is it? Is it ready or not when Void Interactive inevitably comes out with their PVP mode? I'll be curious to see those numbers. If you're talking about competitive like 5v5, 6v6 gameplay, where are y'all at? Like, what are you guys playing that I'm missing? Because I feel like I've played them all. I feel like it's a big, like, been here, done that, game comes out, game dies. I've covered games on this channel like Project Wraith, which I think is trying to deliver, you know, a solid kind of grounded experience in a competitive landscape. I'll be curious to see the numbers. And the reason why I keep bringing up the player numbers, I, I found this very hypocritical from a lot of people commenting on the Rainbow Six content. So Rainbow Six is a bustling community. They're growing and they have like, what, 200,000 people playing on average. And a lot of people were just like, yeah, we don't give a shit about the player numbers. Why are you so focused on the player numbers? I do find it funny that every time I cover a game like Ground Branch, Zero Hour, Six Days in Fallujah, whatever else, every single comment is this game is dead. Look at the Steam charts. So when a game is struggling, it's don't even bother playing it, guys. It's fucking, it, it's dead. Nobody's touching it. But I make a video about Rainbow Six talking about how popular it is. And look, like these, all these people are clamoring to it. The ranked is insane. Yeah, who gives a shit about how popular it is? Very, very hypocritical statements. If we focus on the numbers when a game is dead, we should be able to celebrate the numbers when a game is thriving. And that hypocriticalness that I've seen from more than a select few in my comment section is why I feel like the people that are arguing against R6 are doing so in bad faith. There's a difference between I just don't like the game and I wish that Ubisoft would fucking cancel and die and and I just wish that they didn't give us what I want and the crybaby fucking mentality. My analytics tell me that we're a lot of grown ass men over here. A significant portion of my comment section tells me otherwise. And if it's a sponsored video, whew, sheesh. God forbid a YouTuber tries to wean himself off the YouTube ad revenue scraps. Yeah, God forbid, huh? I should try to find a sponsorship for some soothers and baby oil, huh? Then some of you crybabies can be right at home. And I say all of this, we're about 23 minutes into this video. I say all of this on the back of Ghost Recon, apparently the rumor about the new Ghost Recon project over becoming a realistic milsim style tactical shooter. And my, my entire question is, what's the catch? And if there isn't one, then when it comes to the PVP aspect of it, what's that gonna look like? Is it going to be grounded in reality? Cause I'll be honest, the last two Ghost Wars kind of died the day they came out. Nobody's really playing them, nor do really people jump into Ghost Recon for the PVP. If there is one here and it is that grounded realistic game that everyone's been clamoring for in my comment section, I'll be curious to see the player numbers. But until that game comes out, you guys can catch me on Rainbow Six Siege.